RVing to Alaska is kind of a rite of passage for many RVers. We took our 2019 Winnebago Navion 24D up to Alaska in July of 2019 and explored for a month and a half around the beautiful state. And a lot of you have asked where our Alaska vlogs are, but the truth is we didn't have a YouTube channel then. <laughs> so we're going to do our best to give you what you want. Today we share some of our lessons learned and favorite parts of RVing through Alaska with our top 10 tips. We're Howard and Caitlin Newstate, dog people, food people, adventure people. We've been jet setting and road tripping for over two years. Our passion is sharing the amazing, wonderful, and sometimes challenging parts of our life on the road with you. Taking you off the beaten path, meeting incredible people, and trying new things. Each week we bring you along with us to experience all the amazing places our little home on wheels takes us. It is a long journey to get to Alaska, but it is totally worth it. It is a trip that will test your patience and push you to your limits. <laughs> Definitely. We had just gotten married, so you want to talk about a first time challenge for a newly married couple? Alaska. But we're happy to say our marriage survived and yours can too with these tips. <laughs> so let's get started. Tip number one, make sure you have enough time to get up to Alaska because there are so many things before you even get there to see. Unfortunately, we did not take our own advice on this and we drove from Washington State all the way up through Canada to Alaska in seven days. That's about 2,000 miles in a very remote area, that's a lot to do. We were on a tight timeline because we had friends flying in who were going to RV around Alaska with us. So if we were to do this again, which I think we will one day, we will definitely plan a lot more time because yeah, there's so much to see. Some of our favorite stops were places like Liard Hot Springs. We're walking through a swamp to a hot springs. Thank goodness, this is chilly. and Chetwind, which is home of the International Chainsaw Carving Competition every year. And they display some of the top entries on the street for you and you can walk through and check them out and they're absolutely incredible works of art. There are also some original sections of the Alaska-Canada Highway, or the Alcan as sometimes it's called. One particular stop allows you to cross over one of the original bridges, which are just incredible to see. And another favorite must visit spot is the sign forest in the Yukon. This is such a cool collection where people can bring signs or license plates from wherever they're from. And it has grown into this massive collection that you can walk through. And there are over 80,000 signs, I think now. It's really awesome to see a must stop if you're traveling up through Canada to Alaska. There's a holy grail of RVing through Alaska called the Milepost, and the level of detail in this book is off the charts. It includes routes and mile-by-mile -mile guides through Western Canada and the state of Alaska. So tip number two for us might be kind of controversial, but it's not to solely rely on this book alone. Instead, you should stop at the official start of the Alaska Highway Visitor Center in Dawson Creek, British Columbia where they will hand you a single piece of paper that will change your life. <laughs> While you're there, of course, get your picture or video uh, with the famous sign starting of the Alaska Highway. But this single page is a guide that will show you every single gas station, campground, major stops like Liard Hot Springs, all along the highway leading all the way up to Alaska. It is an excellent cheat sheet and we used it constantly to figure out and plot where we were gonna stop. We'll have a link on our website with a scan of our copy from 2019. It's probably pretty accurate still. Speaking of books, based on other recommendations, we picked up a copy of Mike and Terry Church's Traveler's Guide to Alaskan Camping. Now this is not a replacement to the milepost, but instead it's like a condensed guide that shows you campgrounds and major destinations along all the major routes in and out of Alaska. The most recent edition we could find is from 2017, but the information is still very accurate. So you'll be doing a lot of cross-referencing between all of these different guides and books. We frequently would open up the church's book before we would open the milepost, but most of the time it was that single page would help us to navigate. Tip number three, when you see a gas station, fill up. The Alaska Highway is extremely isolated. We could drive for hours without seeing another human being. The other thing is connectivity is extremely limited on the Alcan or the Alaska Highway. We went for three straight days without having any cell service. So don't put yourself in a position where you find yourself on the side of the road needing help. Tip number four brings us to road conditions. 
Drive slow and be cautious in construction areas and you'll be fine. There's a lot of talk in the RV community about how bad the roads are and how rough they can be on your RV. Are they gonna damage your RV? Well, it depends on how you drive. You get really good at spotting frost heaves. This is kind of like an inverted speed bump where the road has been damaged from the winter's snow and ice and it's sort of buckled underneath all of that weight. Every year, crews replace large sections of the highway because the weather simply damages it that bad. So this goes for both the drive through Canada on the Alaska Highway and once you're exploring the state. Driving in these sections can be really rough on your rig and they're completely gravel surfaces. But if you take it slow, which a lot of times you're forced to because there's a pilot car that you're following, you will be fine. And another thing, you always have to keep your eyes peeled for bears, moose, bison, and more. And watch out for them on the roads. Because the Alaska Highway is so remote, a lot of times herds of animals are crossing the highway or just hanging out there. Which is an amazing photo opportunity when it happens. Tip number five, mandatory pet health certificates. Alaska requires a specific pet health certificate that you must receive from a vet outside the state before you enter. We got Piper and Ella's done at a PetSmart Banfield in Washington State. Now the vet will have to fill out a specific form and sign it after examining your pet. We were never asked for the paperwork, but if you get caught without it, I'm sure there's at least a fine and probably some big trouble you can get into. Yes, so make sure you have it. So let's get to the actual experience. Tip number six, you really can camp almost anywhere in Alaska. Unless there are local regulations, for example, inside the city of Anchorage, everything else is fair game. We did pretty much a mix of actual campgrounds as well as free camping or boondocking throughout all of Alaska. We found a beautiful pull-off one night that even had a fire pit and was right on the river. One of our favorite boondocking spots was just outside of Valdez on a glacier-filled lake. It was beautiful. We also camped inside Denali National Park, so it really was a mix of different camping experiences. But that's kind of the beauty of it. You can pick and choose and try different things all throughout the state. Tip number seven may surprise you, but prices in Anchorage are pretty much the same as they are in the lower 48 when you're talking about big chain stores. So think Walmart, Target, Bass Pro Shops. But once you get into the remote areas, prices can really skyrocket for food, gas, and everything else. Also keep in mind the very short tourist season in Alaska. Because of that, restaurants and tourist areas only have about three or four months where they can charge for the entire year of revenue. So if you're going to some of the smaller towns or tourist attractions within Alaska, just make sure that you budget and expect higher prices for some of those things. I hate to break it to you, but Netflix and chill is not really a big part of Alaska. Connectivity can definitely be a challenge there. And tip number eight is do not anticipate that your phone will work. Of the well-known carriers in the lower 48, only AT&T and Verizon have some towers in some areas of Alaska, but even they, along with Sprint and T-Mobile, tend to roam on a local carrier called GCI, which is only found in Alaska. Be aware that most of Alaska has no service at all. A smaller section have just phone service, meaning no data at all. And then an even smaller section, which really is around towns and bigger cities like Anchorage, will have 4G service that you'd be familiar with. I would strongly suggest you check out the link below for GCI's coverage map, because that will tell you most likely what kind of cell service you're gonna get throughout the entire state. Tip number nine is a bit of a double-edged sword. It's really awesome on the one hand and kind of challenging on the other. Prepare yourself for almost 24 hours of straight daylight, which sounds really cool because you have all this extra time for adventuring and exploring and hiking, but that'll start to take its toll on you because obviously you need to sleep, which if you're a light sleeper like I am, can be a bit of an adjustment when it's light outside. In the RV, we do have pretty decent blackout shades, but when it's like dusk or dawn all night long, that can be a challenge. So I would recommend if you're a light sleeper, just get some extra blackout shades or what I did was I utilized one of those sleeping eye face masks and that definitely helped do the trick. Tip number 10, always have your camera ready. There's so much incredible scenery and wildlife everywhere, you won't believe the pictures that you're gonna get. We look back on all of these pictures and videos in awe that we actually got to experience this firsthand. It's just that kind of a place. Alaska is such a special part of our country and we feel so lucky that we got to experience it in the first year of RV life. Yeah, once you've been, you'll realize it really is the trip of a lifetime. 
It's bonus tip time. You didn't think we'd leave you with just 10. <laughs> this one is to always be bear aware. This is a way of life in Alaska. Bear activity is real, whether you're containing your food in a campground or making sure you're keeping a lookout while you're on hikes for bears. And we learned a really important tip from a ranger at Denali National Park. Hey bear! Hey bear! Hey bear. We still continue to use this tip today. We were just at Glacier National Park and I was out there yelling, hey bear, as often as I possibly could. And you might feel a little silly while you're out there screaming this in the middle of the wilderness, but you get over that real quick when you realize that it is a life-saving tactic. So we got a question about uh, bear food. It's a good example. The idea is to make as much noise as you can on a regular basis because you don't want to startle or surprise a bear who might be along the trail just like you. So make sure you carry bear spray. And it needs to say bear spray also because as you're crossing in and out of Canada, if it does not say bear spray, it's considered a weapon and you cannot bring it into the country. And they will specifically ask you about this. So there it is, our 10 plus one tips for RVing in Alaska. But don't worry, this is not going to be the last video you're going to see from us about Alaska. We've barely scratched the surface. There's so much more to share with you. So coming up, we're going to be telling you about some of our top favorite places that we visited during our month and a half there. Places like Valdez, Whittier, and Homer. And for even more of our adventures, check out some of the videos on the screen right now. And remember to subscribe and click the bell so you get notifications when we post our newest videos every week. Thanks so much for watching.